Very cool. We are back here in the studio. We are with our pioneer of prayer, <laughs> Jen Stevenson, who is very excited to be sitting across <laughs> from the couch. Very excited. <laughs> yeah. we, um, we're into this season in our study guide of Love God. We've, we've talked about worship. Mm. We just want to focus in on prayer now. And I thought Wonderful. who better to talk to about prayer oh. than Jen? <laughs> Thank you. But, Jen, before I... Bombard you with questions about prayer. Mm. I, I want to just, just on the spot, without any preparation. Of course. <laughs> throw out to you. I was just driving in and I was thinking, oh, first question I'd ask is, outside of Jesus in the Scriptures, who is somebody that you look to that inspires you? Outside of Jesus? I haven't really Jesus. thought about that. Yeah, so on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just lately I've been... Um, pondering Smith Wigglesworth's comment about oh, prayer. Yep. As he said, um, I don't pray for longer than 15 minutes, but I don't go 15 minutes without praying. Huh. And I thought that has just been uh, on my heart and on my mind lately for those yep. people that um, are wondering, you know, what sort of prayer life to have. Sure. So whether you are constantly never ceasing in prayer, which the Bible asks us to do, or whether you're actually making time and setting aside time for the Lord. So that's kind of been on my mind. So I would say he inspires me a lot. He's an interesting guy, hey? Mm. He's uh, from memories an evangelist from what the, the, is it 1800s or early 1900s? I can't remember. Early 1900s, I think. Yeah, Um, English. He Mm. was a plumber by trade. Yeah. He's radically filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And just like he, he's the guy that's known for punching people in the stomach, yes, and their cancer getting healed. <laughs> which yes, we're not going to teach. No, no, no. <laughs> but he did raise his wife from the dead. Yes, yeah, yeah. He did a lot, that. Of, lot and, of reported miracles. Yes, amazing things. And and you're right. Like he, he I, I've I've listened to some of his messages. Not that um, the recordings of him actually preaching. No, because that'd be impossible. Yeah, but. People used to transcribe messages back in those days yeah. and sometimes what they'd do is they'd send them out as letters. Mm. It's like the old school um, CD or tape ministry. Yeah. So I've listened to some of those said back and the guy was passionate mm. about intimacy with God. He was, yeah. Like if that was his primary thought, he built everything out of that. Yes, that's right. So for you yourself in, in pioneering and in, in building a prayer culture within our church, has it always been your passion for, for prayer to be that ultimate expression of ministry or is it something that built over time? Um, I I started out uh, in a worship team mm. in the Salvation Army and then when they got here, I was oh, in a bad on, mood. Sal- Salva- Sorry, just a minute. Yeah. Salvation Army, Yeah. did it have brass music? No. Oh, no. Jace. No. Salvation Army <laughs> worship music with cymbals mm. and trumpets. That rocks. <laughs> Do you reckon we should bring it back? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, come on. Okay, so it wasn't quite that. But no, no, we didn't have the those type of instruments. We just had a regular band. Okay, yeah. all right. That's yeah. still cool. It was good. Yeah, it was fun. So coming out of there, I ended up here. And um, I was in a bad mood for about 10 years and didn't do anything, just sat Mm. and did nothing really. And then I had prayer ministry, Mm. which changed my life over in a matter of minutes. Wow. Um, And I asked the Lord, what is it you want me to do? And I felt that he was talking to me constantly about prayer ministry in the church. I had nothing to do with it, mm. um, but I was getting downloads of what it could look like. Um, all sorts of things were coming to me, scriptures, and then we had um, a special meeting with um, a lady from over east, was a prayer leader from over there, yeah, Heidi Wiseman, and Basically at that meeting, everything she was saying was everything that I'd already heard from the Lord was downloaded. Wow. Um, so then I didn't get the job. Somebody else got the job. Yeah. Um, and I said to my husband, I said, oh, 
I must have this wrong. And he said, no, he said, you haven't, you've got to be the best two I see sure. you can be to that, la- to that lady that has taken yep. it on. Yep. And so I did that and eventually she um, didn't do it anymore and therefore I came into that position mm. and then I just felt the Lord say, make sure everything is covered in prayer for the church. Wow. So that's what I've kind of been doing, just making sure every area yeah. over the years has been covered in prayer. Yeah, and one of the things I appreciate in that is that you, you've desired to take others in the journey with you uh, to to grow teams of yeah. prayer teams. And, um, oh, our prayer teams are amazing. They are. Yeah. Yeah. They really are. They're really on fire for God yeah. and loving prayer and, yeah. And it's one of those things that... Um, I don't know. The, the scriptures are pretty clear. Prayer, prayer's a thing mm. and, a, and a core thing. Yeah. But it is an easy thing to neglect. Mm. Yes. I, I would even say, you know, as we're going through this study guide, we're looking at um, worship, prayer, word, just to start things off. I don't know about you, but I, I would say the greatest battle for my affections in, in, in ministry to the Lord isn't worship. Uh, that one's actually usually not that hard. Mm-hmm. Um, it might take a bit of a process of me just auditing my heart to see if I've allowed any idols in or things like that. Word, I, I easily engage with the word. Yeah. Prayer for me is often a battle, mm-hmm. mainly because I find that my mind's always racing mm-hmm. about what I need to do. Yes. Yeah? Yes. H- have you ever found that yourself? Yes, yeah, so sometimes it is difficult to have that concentration. Um, and so uh, I guess for me, I just take it as it goes. So if, you know, I, I realise my busyness, I try and um, make time for the Lord when I can. Yeah. But I also do the Smith Wigglesworth thing of just trying to be – not ceasing in my prayer. So I can't, it's all like talking to God all day yep. um, rather than um, kicking myself about, oh, I've been too busy. Well, I'll just pray now. I don't think there's guilt and condemnation in it. I That's think cool. I think it's just, you know, do what you can do. But I am I sort of believe that he's, and he's always here. He's always with us. He's always talking to us, number one, and he's always willing to listen to us and, and so I, I just think it's a constant thing. It's a really mm. a deep relationship with him. And so if you if you feel, oh, my goodness, I haven't prayed for, well, that's okay. Pray now. Just yeah, do it. Right. Just do it whenever you feel to, you know, speak to him. So in the car yep. is a great one because you're on your own and you can concentrate. Um like early hours of the morning, I know that's not for everyone, but intercessors are it's not a wide bad idea, that way. Though, eh? <laughs> it's not a bad idea before yeah. everything gets rolling. Yeah. Yeah, there's something yeah. to it. Yeah. Because I realise, Jen, as we're talking, we're, there'll be some of us that are, are yet to start the journey in engaging in prayer, mm-hmm. which in, in some ways, as you're describing it, is a ongoing conversation with God. Yeah. Whether it's processing, whether it's, putting things out there, whether it's, in, in my mind, I, I love just contending and persisting for the will of God in something. Yes. You know, you get mm. that sense that, man, this is not the heart of God for something mm. and just persisting in, mm-hmm. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, like yeah. Jesus taught taught us to pray. So some of us that are yet to really start the journey, some of us that are relatively new and, you know, like anything new, sometimes we, we grab hold of it, sometimes it falls, sometimes we grab hold of it. And then there's others that have been in the journey for a long time that it, it's very easy to maybe even lose that initial mm-hmm. passion. Yes. So if I yeah. was to break it down to those three groups of us mm-hmm. within our church, and I, I would just to say, Jen, imagine you're sitting next to somebody, number one, who is yet to start the journey. Okay. Yeah. What would you say to them? I think the Lord's Prayer is a great start. Come on. Yeah. And it's it's an example yep. of how we can pray, giving God glory, you know, asking for our needs, all yep. those types of things. So are that's all... Matthew chapter 6. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
And so he, so that's a great way to sort of unpack a prayer. Jesus gives us a perfect example. Sure. Um, yeah, so that would be for the person who so, started so out. yet to start, they can mm. build a prayer life by looking mm. at Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus yeah. taught his disciples yeah. how to pray. It's often called the Lord's Prayer. Yes. It's really the disciples' it's, prayer. It is, yeah. It's, it's our prayer. <laughs> yeah. And he, yeah. he starts with this thing. Do you have it memorised? Mm, oh, I do, but... I, yeah. I, I, I've got it. You're asking me so, now with the lights on. <laughs> I've got it like the back of my head, but I don't reckon I'll get it all right. It's like. Um, Our Father who art in heaven. Oh, yes, I'm going to memorize name. old school as well. I thy kingdom come. Why, I don't understand why because I never grew up in the church, but I've got <laughs> old King James with that one. But yeah. And you know what? Father, years ago it was an old song. And Is that's that how it, it sort of And as a kid, my mum used to play it. And I used to hear it over and over again. That's oh. how I remember it. But she was, a, it was a nun singing. Really? Yeah. yeah. Knock on those nuns. Oh, this is just, yeah, that's years yeah. ago. Yeah. My mum grew up watching a show <laughs> called The Flying Nun. Yeah. She loved it. It's weird. It was yeah. like a nun it is had weird. a hat yeah. and a wind would pick her up and she'd fly. She's like, <laughs> she's like Iron Man nun. James, have you ever heard of this? No. no. <laughs> there is literally a show mm. from, I don't know, like, 50s. 50s called the Flying Nun, yeah. where this 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 nun <laughs> has a weird hat that the wind captures it, and she can fly over <laughs> walls and buildings, and she saves lives. And do you yeah. want to redo it as a pastor? Like, <laughs> let's bring it back. <laughs> as we're talking, I'm thinking, man, Marvel's got something to untap there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just like bring out the next Marvel movie. Flying Nun. The Return of the Flying Nun. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we started with the Lord's Prayer and we got to the Flying Nun. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, but the Lord's Prayer teaches us how we can approach God. Mm. He is our Father. Yes. But our, our Father, that's how Jesus starts it. Yeah. Your Father, my Father, um, intimate relationship. He's in heaven, so he's beyond us. Mm-hmm. Hallowed be your name. Or... Prayer really starts with that foundation that we're coming to God in the sense that we're in awe of him too. Yes. Hallowed be yeah. your name. Yeah. And then without going into all of it, that next thought that Jesus teaches in prayer is your kingdom come. And your will be done. Yeah. Which implies to me in prayer, Jen, that um, is God's will always done? Well, he answers prayer. There we go. So... We, and we believe we receive what we an, what we yeah. ask for, right? And so, I, as a um, intercessor, we we're, we're asking for heaven on earth. Yeah. So when we're praying for healing, we're pulling down. There's no there's no sickness and disease in heaven. Yes. So we're pulling that down yeah. to earth. Yeah. So yeah. It's a cool thought. It's a cool thought. Yeah. yeah. I I like the idea of thinking through this that um, we have a. We get to play a part in the will of God. Yeah. It's not say, saying our will be done, it's God's will be done, but yet prayer seems to really matter. It does really matter. And and my sense is, so I don't believe every single, single thing that happens in this broken world mm-hmm. represents God's will. Mm. I'd say there's the perfect will of God, there's the permitted will of God. Perfect will of God is this idea of, Redeeming things that are broken, binding up the broken heart, it's setting captives free, yeah. covering the side of the blind. It's it's taking that which has been destroyed by the brokenness of the world and putting it back together. Mm. But then I, I know that God permits all of us to have our own wills. Yeah. And I almost see prayer, I don't know if this is weird or not, but I see prayer as a battle of wills. Okay. So it's it, am I willing to submit my will to God? Yeah. Am I willing to contest against the will of um, Satan and the kingdom of darkness? Yeah. Am I willing to stand with a standard in the ground and be unmovable, stand against the wind mm-hmm. to see God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven? And yeah. I, I find there's this, this element of prayer, while there's reflective and mm-hmm. contemplative and processing, I always grab hold of this thought, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. It's wonderful. Mm. It's wonderful. Yeah, we've got to stand in that. So mm. that's, that's a thought for somebody new to the journey. Have a look at the Lord's teaching of the disciples' prayer will reclaim it in yeah. Matthew 6 <laughs> and just maybe even read it out loud and then 
pray it through as if it's your prayer. Yeah, that's right. And then right. go off on tangents. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's somebody new to the journey. What about somebody who has started the journey in prayer mm-hmm. but now like anything, before it becomes a habit, it's not a habit. Mm. You know, you, 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 you pick it up. You, you, you forget about it. Pick it up, forget about it. Mm-hmm. What would you say to somebody saying, I, I desperately want to build a culture of prayer in my life, but I just I forget? You forget. Mm. Uh, I think it's easy to forget because we're all so busy, we really do. But yeah. I think um, for if you're trying to build something in your life, then structure is good. Okay. So perhaps, you know, making a certain amount of time when you get up in the morning and do it before anything else. So sure. if you're getting out of bed, your feet hit the ground, make that your moment just to acknowledge the Lord, have a moment with him, pray into your day and then get moving. Yeah. And then as your day carries on, you know, and things pop up, oh, Lord, I want to include you in this conversation wow. that I'm about to have. You know, what You know what would you have me to say to this yeah, person? Great. How can I encourage them? So keep talking. Not only that, keep listening. So sometimes, you know, we, we're just so busy that the, we haven't got, we just don't listen. Yes, that's true. And um, we can't hear his voice. Yeah. But how about, um, you know, just stopping for a moment. I mean, everyone has a lunch break. Maybe on that lunch break you just stop for a minute and listen. Wow. So it's just putting structure in really. Yeah, yeah. And if you're a spontaneous type of person, then do it as you please. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I like what you said there. I've often wanted to encourage a culture where people's cars, mm. where their point of transport becomes a tabernacle. Yeah, yeah. Like yes. I, I just think that's an untapped resource. Yeah. A spiritual growth. Yes. Like you, you, many people are getting up super early mm. to beat the traffic. Yeah. And they're driving mm-hmm. and they're, they're often driving, you know, at least 20 to 40 minutes, yeah. maybe even an hour. Yes. Man, even dedicating the first portion of that time mm-hmm. and just getting out in prayer, everything that's going on in your head. Yeah. As if it's Jesus good. was sitting next to you in the car. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that idea because then it, you, your car becomes a holy place. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's true. I, I used to um, work early in the morning and on the way to work, um, you know, I'd be praying on the way to work. And on the way there, occasionally I used to feel like, the, you know, heaviness mm. coming a, you know, a, for somebody else or for myself, just like a heavy time in your life. And I used to do shouts of praise mm. all along Safety Bay Road there, mm. <laughs> all the way to work. Windows and, down? Yeah, man. <laughs> and he, I just used to let it rip. And I'm telling you, it shifts something in the spirit. And so I believe in like um, speaking out loud sure. with your prayers and, and actually um, hearing yourself praying as well. Yeah. You know, what you're saying when you're, when you're, when you're um, praying, you're hearing it also, yeah. you know. It's getting down into your heart. Yeah, you're starting sure. to believe it for yourself as well. When you're praying scripture out loud, you know, you're starting to believe it when you pray it out loud. Mm. So you hear yourself, yeah. I think that's good for people that want to, yeah, in that group. Just build that consistency. Mm-hmm. So you've got people that are new to the journey. Mm-hmm. People who are building the, the 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 lifestyle of prayer, and then I'd say there's another type of person that's been around for a while. Mm. They, they've they've heard a lot of messages, mm-hmm. raised their hands a lot, yeah. And maybe they've had seasons of intense, passionate prayer. Maybe they're working through disappointment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're working through wow, things didn't go the way that I expected. Yeah, yeah. And and here I am. Still, without a doubt, that I believe in God. Yeah. But just losing that passion mm. to live in a interaction with Him. Okay. What would you so, say? I would say this: that view it like this. When you're out in the water, imagine you're out at the beach. You're out in the water, and you're out in the deep. Yeah. And you're sort of waiting for that wave, you know, and you're sort of paddling there, and you're okay. And the waves come and you catch it and you're on a high 
and you're riding that wave in and it's all joy. It's all joy and it's all wonderful and exciting and fantastic and beautiful and then suddenly you're coming into the beach and you step off your board or whatever onto the beach and then you're on the beach, you hit the hard, hard spot. The idea there is if you want to catch the next wave, you've got to turn around, start your swimming out, Mm. start your paddling, get yourself moving, get out to the deep again, wait on the Lord and catch the next wave in. So that's kind of how I sometimes view my prayer life is like, oh, I'm on the beach. Okay. Yeah, they do. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, okay, I need to get back into the Word first and let God start speaking to me out of the word. Wow. And then, you know, back into prayer over what I'm receiving out of the word. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, that's your paddling. You're getting back out there. Suddenly you're in the deep. Suddenly there's re- too much revelation. You don't know what to do with it all. Yeah, wow. You're writing things madly. You're praying about it. Yeah. And you're waiting for the next wave of the Holy Spirit to, you know, take you. It's cool. That's how I view it. So it's a good picture. So I think people just, yeah, you've, you've got to stay in that. Stay in that. That's really cool. Yeah. I'd encourage that. How do you stay in that? Exactly that. Yeah. If I have, um, if I've hit the sand and I'm just like, now what? Yeah. I'm back in the word. And um, on another note too, so you'll have seasons and times in your life where as a prayer person Mm. you'll be up early hours of the morning Mm. or you'll be up late at night. I I don't have a regular sleep, I don't think, because mm. I when I wake up, I assume it's God waking me waking me up. Sure. And he wants to speak. Yeah. So sometimes I'm up at 2, mm. sometimes I'm up at 4. Mm. Um it just whatever the Lord is doing with with me at that time. So I would say to that person who's on the beach, yeah. uh, you know, what is God saying to you? Great. Is He is He stirring you to come, to speak with Him, and you're missing it? Yeah. Be, you know, as an intercessor, quite often we're up early, you know, seeking the Lord and all that sort of thing. And so, so if God's waking you up at four, yeah, maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe it's not just because you you know something's a loud noise is waking you. No, sure. maybe God is stirring you to pray. Yeah. So taking notice of those types of things, yeah. Um, because yeah, if you're in that spot where you feel God is, um, you know, you f- you feel like you haven't got a prayer life, or your prayer life's become boring, or whatever you think, yeah. you've got to start looking for where God is speaking to you. He's always speaking. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why I always go back to His Word because yeah. He always speaks through His Word, and yep. quite often creation for me. So sometimes I'll see something sure. and it will spark me to think of the Lord and yeah. um, and I'll be you, seeking you, Him. you'll go on prayer walks from time to time, hey? We do, yeah. Yeah. yeah and just do. get out, clear head, yeah. no distractions. Yes. Yeah. And that's when creation, like um, little things like I saw a little red boat parked up in the pond. Yeah. Um, and he started talking to me about that, you wow. know, how people are in waiting to get out there amongst the, the ocean and they hear yeah. it is stuck in the pond. And it sort of like speaks, spoke to me about people that are caught uh, mm. up in and stuck mm. and how God really wants to put the wind in their sails, Holy Spirit, yeah, and take them out. That's so word. that's how he speaks. We just got to be open to what he's saying. Yeah. Put ourselves in position. I like it. Jay, so if I could just pivot to you, if that's okay. I, I'm thinking you, you've been a member of the church for quite a while. We have different prayer gatherings um, that we sort of host. We have probably, in my mind, the, the, the key gathering we have on a Sunday is actually our prayer gathering that we have at 8.30 that's meant to finish at 9 but never seems to. Um, we, we do a Wednesday evening fortnightly prayer gathering Um and then as we feel led, we'll call other ones. Jen's now doing pop-up prayers in different parts of the uh, city. But just for you as a church member observing prayer culture build in our church, ha- has anything jumped out to you? What do you sort of see as you observe this building up amongst us? 
I think just what a difference it's made for us to be committed to it as a church. Um, I think everything we do flows out of prayer. And, you know, I think that's a, that's a testament to the dedication of the prayer team, but, um, but also I think the way that it's just flowed into the church, you know, to see all the different prayer gatherings build up and there's just a hunger, you know, and that, that is building, like there's momentum there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like, like I'm personally a part of the worship team here, but I think if I look back at the times when I think I've probably had the the deepest encounters with with God myself, they've probably been in like prayer gatherings, wow. not necessarily in worship because sure. sure. that can be distracting for me. Yep. But, yep. you know, in our prayer gatherings, that's when I'm able to, you know, sit sit in his presence and just, yeah. It's cool, hey. Yep. It's worth persevering with, hey. Absolutely. Like yep. um, seems to be a strange strategy for church growth is to have this sense we'll grow through prayer gatherings. Mm. Um, just in our modern culture, it's, it's not something that I've heard unpacked much, but my, my burden has been that we would literally just plant ourselves there on prevailing in the will of God. You know, that we just have to create avenues for as many people that want to engage with it mm. to do so. And, and I've been in prayer gatherings where we've had maybe two people, three people out to some of our prayer gatherings on a Sunday morning have gotten as large as 90 mm. and, and just thinking this is, as long as we're consistent and we're just building, it's like what you're saying, Jen, like, yep, sometimes we hit the, the peak of the wave and we enjoy that momentum. Mm. And then it seems like God says after you've caught that initial momentum that's come out of prayer, right, paddle back out yeah, to the hard yards because I want to take you deeper. Yes. And there's yeah, a bigger wave. That's right, yeah. And it, it seems to be in the life of the church, a lot of our growth in seasons has actually been prevailed upon in prayer first. And then as we've prevailed in prayer, and sometimes it's been a, a hard paddle, hard paddle. I can feel the weight of it. Mm. But as we've persisted and not given up and not thrown in the towel and not said thus far and no further, as we've paddled on, it seems to, oh, things have gotten easier again. We're flowing, but we wouldn't have got there without that that consistency yeah. to prioritise prayer as a church. Mm. And that, that's why it's important, to be honest, because like, like, you know, if it wasn't for Jen and the team and, and you know, what, what we've built is like, who's who's going to cover the church? You know, yeah. Um, yeah. If we're not pushing back against what's coming at us, then yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not going to be. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I love it. It's a good thing. So, Jen, if I could just finish up with one last question for you. Uh, somebody's listened to this. They they they're at different points in the journey. But ultimately the question may come up, yeah, well, okay, well, what benefit is this? Like we're talking about prayer. We're talking about, I, I love the idea of prayer as sometimes I've referred to, and especially in the book of Acts, mm. as ministry to the Lord. Yeah. I like that picture. Yeah. But yeah. also like, okay, what what difference does it make? And what would you say to that? Well, first up, prayer changes things. Mm. Definitely changes things. And we have to believe that, what we pray for, we receive. Yeah. Um, that's always in my mind when I pray. I believe I receive this, Lord. So, And I believe things are going to change. So when you're praying for your family, uh, you know, you want to believe for the best for them and you believe you receive it. You mightn't see it, yeah, but that's sure. having faith. Sure. That is going to come through. Yeah. And so in my life, praying for my marriage, five and a half years, yeah. of seeing things basically get worse before yeah. they got better. Yeah. But hanging in there in prayer and meeting with a couple of really good friends at the time, uh, you know, weekly and yeah. praying praying for uh, each other, but yeah, in that sure. moment they would pray for my for my marriage. Yeah. And, and just trusting God all the time and knowing that it will change things. But yeah. perseverance is the thing. It's Come the on. key. Come on. So um, I think, yeah, being... Being consistent in it, staying, staying 
you know. Yeah. Staying in it. That's good. Mm. That's good. I like it. I, I Before we started filming, you mentioned too, like the, the gift of prayer is that, you know, we get to live out of that Philippians chapter 4 scripture where yes, Paul says, yeah. um, be, anxious be anxious for, for nothing. nothing. But by prayer and petition, thanksgiving. Come on. Yeah. So yeah. that is important. That's another important thing. Um, you know, if you're not praying, you're worrying. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Give it to the give it to the Lord. You sure. know, be anxious for nothing. He says, just yeah. pray. Yeah. So we do that, and we and even in that scripture, Pastor Chris, if you keep reading, it gives you a list of things to focus on. Wow. Which is keys to conquering anxiety, yeah, just wow. like that. So that's in Philippians chapter 4. Yeah, yeah. So that's a key scripture, yeah. that portion of scripture. If you want to conquer anxiety, wow. that is that is the that is the absolute answer wow. to it. Wow. And prayer is pivotal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prayer, thanksgiving, and then if you read further, you'll see the list. Yeah. You know, meditate on these things, what is good, what is just. Come all, on. All those beautiful things that God has. Yeah, let yeah. prayer be prescriptive. Yeah, yeah. Jen, could you just seal the deal for us? For anybody listening to this podcast, could you just pray sure. for us? For pray for us as a church. Yeah. Pray that we continue to grow in our heart for prayer. Yeah. Would yeah. be okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, Lord. We give you the honour and the glory today. Mm. And we just lift our eyes to you, Lord God, and we ask, Lord, that you would help us to become people of prayer, to help us, Lord, to deepen our relationship with you in all that we do in prayer. Lord God, I lift up those that struggle in prayer and I say, Father, help them to be able to swim back out. Equip them, Lord God, in your word, Lord. Show them, teach them and guide them, Lord. And speak to us, Lord. We know that you're speaking all the time, but speak to us that we hear you. Make sure we're listening, Lord God. Get our attention if you need to. We love you, Lord, and our eyes are on you, our ears are open to you, and our hearts are open to you also. And so, Lord, I thank you for the intercessors that are coming out of the caves right now. Mm. I thank you, Lord, that they are um, taking their stand as they should and praying into the church and the Come church on. family and all that needs to be covered in prayer. Lord, let us be a people of prayer in this house, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.